Chapter 5. The Rivonia Trial, 1963-1964 In July 1963, the Rivonia Trial began. In 1962, a new law had given the courts the power to give death sentences for crimes of sabotage, and anyone who owned a weapon could be charged with sabotage. In court with Mandela and Walter Sisulu, were Governor Mbeki, Ahmed Kathrada, and Lionel Bernstein. All three were members of the Communist Party, as well as members of the ANC. Raymond Pilaba, a leader of the ANC and MK in the Cape Province, Elias Motswaledi, and Andrew Mlangeni, both members of the ANC, and Dennis Goldberg, who was the youngest of the accused. During the 1960s, the police began using torture while questioning prisoners. In 1963, Luxmart Sawandle Ngudle, a member of the ANC, was the first political prisoner to die while police were questioning him. Bram Fisher was one of the members of MK who was not at Lily's Leaf when the police surrounded the farm. He avoided arrest and so he was able to lead the team of lawyers. Every day, the accused met their lawyers in order to prepare for the trial. Bram told his friends that they were charged with sabotage and that the government lawyers were going to ask for the death sentence. As a prisoner, Mandela at first had to appear in court wearing his prison uniform. Later, he was allowed to wear a suit. At first, Winnie was not allowed to go to the trial, but later she was allowed to go but forbidden to wear hosa clothes in court. Both Albertina Sisulu and Caroline Motsualedi were unable to go to the trial of their husbands because they were in prison, arrested under the 90-day detention law. This law allowed the police to arrest any person suspected of a political crime and keep them in prison for up to 90 days without charging them with any crime or letting them see a lawyer. Hundreds of papers had been found by the police at Lily's Leaf Farm, as well as maps which showed power stations and railways, but they found no weapons. The most important person to speak against the accused at the trial was Bruno Mtolo. Mtolo had been a member of the ANC and a member of MK, but now he was helping the police. Mandela and the others found it difficult to believe that someone they had worked with was helping to send them to prison and possibly to death. From the beginning, the accused decided to accept the charge of sabotage. They wanted to use the trial to explain their ideas and to continue their struggle against apartheid. Much later, Kathrada remembered, right through the trial, right from day one, he led us, he guided us. From the first day, he said, this is a political trial. Mandela was the first to speak in court. He told the court that he was one of the people who had organized Omkonto Wisizwe. He explained to the court that, although he was not a communist himself, the Communist Party was the only political group in South Africa which believed in the equality of Africans. Mandela spoke about the difference between the lives of black people and the lives of white people in South Africa. Because of apartheid, Africans experienced no dignity in their lives, but Africans wanted a fair share in the whole of South Africa. Above all, we want equal political rights, he said. This is what the ANC is fighting for. It is a struggle of the African people. Mandela spoke for over four hours. Then he put down his papers and turned to the judge, Justice Devet. During his lifetime, he said, he had given himself to the struggle of the African people. He believed in a nation where all people live together with equal rights. If necessary, he was prepared to die for this. In London, Joe Slovo, who had escaped from South Africa just before the police discovered Lily's Leaf, led a march to protest against the trial. Unable to return to his own country, 
Joe Slover lived for 27 years in the UK, Mozambique, Zambia and Angola. The United Nations also asked the South African government to stop the trial. On the 11th of June, 1964, the accused were found guilty, except for Lionel Bernstein, who was released. That night, they prepared themselves for the death sentence. The next day, they entered the court for the last time. About 2,000 people waited outside the court. Mandela's mother had travelled all the way from Kunu and sat with Winnie in the crowded court. Mandela and the other accused stood before the judge. Justice Devet's face was serious and he spoke slowly. The sentence in the case of all the accused will be one of life imprisonment. The Rivonia trial was over. The accused could hear the crowd singing Nkose Sikaleli, Africa, as they were driven back to Pretoria prison. In the street, Winnie waited with their two daughters for a last sight of Mandela, but the crowd was too great. She drove home to Orlando and put the children to bed. Only then did she sit down and cry. The prisoners were taken back to Pretoria prison. Every night in the prison, African prisoners sang freedom songs. Before they slept, someone always shouted, Amandla, and hundreds of voices answered, Ngawetu. That night was no different, but in the middle of the night, Mandela, Sisulu, Mbeki, Mlaba, Masualedi, Mlangeni, and Kathrada were woken and taken from the prison. They were flown in an old army plane to Robben Island to begin their sentence. Only black prisoners were taken to Robben Island, so the white prisoner, Dennis Goldberg, remained at Pretoria Prison.